The story of Anglican care began back in 1944. The vision of Charles Arthur Brown, the then Registrar of the Anglican Diocese, who recognised a growing need for aged care services in the community. And the wheels were set in motion. The original parcel of land at Booragal was purchased for £1,100. And in May 1956, a vision became a reality when the first home was officially opened by His Excellency, the Governor of New South Wales, Lieutenant General Sir John Northcott. The first decade was one of enormous growth for the time. Mr Fred Lane, the first of only two chairmen in Anglican Care's history, was appointed in 1955. To meet government subsidy requirements, Booragal Old Folks Homes Women's Auxiliary was established in 1957 and led by Mrs Hughes, set about raising funds to assist with construction of further living accommodation and other facilities. Personal care units were the first to be developed, followed by hostel style units, and then in October 1962, a 12-bed nursing home was completed and occupied under the watchful eye of matron Alga Ricketts. Development in the late 60s saw construction of the second stage of the nursing home. Together with administrative offices, roadworks, a recreation hall, canteen and kitchens, and a chapel. The beloved matron Mackintosh retired in 1968, and this year also saw the appointment of George Wright to the position of administrator, a role which he held for 13 years. And as the organisation grooved into the 70s, $28,000 was able to build a new dining room for the nursing home, a storeroom and a mortuary. Expansion in the late 70s and early 80s saw construction of a 40-bed facility with a dining room and kitchen for the whole village, which eventually became known as the Fred Lane Hostel, together with the commencement of a day therapy centre. The new nursing home was completed at Booragal in 1983 and named Maria Frith Lodge in honour of the considerable financial support from the Frith family. And the old nursing home was renamed Pilgrim Lodge, recognising Thelma Pilgrim's 25 years of dedication to the auxiliary. These buildings, together with Fred Lane Hostel, now make up the C.A. Brown residential home that exists today at Booragal. Like many in the Hunter, Anglican Care had its share of damage from the 1989 earthquake. The only building not to receive damage was the chapel at Booragal. The 80s and 90s witnessed much growth not only through construction of facilities, but also in aged care requirements. The first community care packages were introduced and an expansion into service departments and self-care units through the acquisition of IntraCare saw residents and client numbers increase to 600 and staff to 420. 1991 saw the rebuilding of Macintosh Hostel dedicated to the much-loved Mrs Mac. And in 1995, all of the facilities were officially recognised under the identity of Anglican Care. In the year of the Sydney Olympics, the government approved plans for a dementia wing at Kerry Bay and Jasmine Grove became operational. In 2001, the Department of Health and Aged Care approved 48 low care places in the Wyong district and a site was purchased at Warnervale. In 2005, CA Brown Village underwent a significant redevelopment, particularly the self-care units and the new administration building also at Booragal was completed. Anglican Care was also recognised in the 100 fastest growing businesses in the Hunter region at this time. Expansion continued into the Newcastle area with the purchase of Scenic Lodge Hostel at Merriweather and Buchanan Court Self-Care Merriweather. And in May 2006, Anglican Care celebrated 50 years of providing quality care and services to the community. What were the hopes for the future back in 2006? When we celebrate the 60th anniversary, I'd think I'd like to see us with, a, with some um, other sites sort of uh, upgraded with um, the site up at Scenic Lodge, some of that up upgraded and just being able to be number one in what we do, which is um, aged care and delivering it out to the community as well as to the residents that live within the village. I would like to see some more uh, interesting developed research perhaps uh, on uh, people going there and preventing, anticipating, preventing uh, Alzheimer's.
I don't think you'll see low care or hostel facilities as we call them such. There will be an increased uh, participation in the community. Uh, I think community based services will be by far and away the, the bulk of our, uh, our business but we will still have high care facilities such as nursing homes now. People we will be maintained in the community by security, by community support services as long as they possibly can. We're just moving into the EACH programs which is extended aged care in the home where you've got registered nurses going into the homes. People will be supported there as long as they can till they will come into nursing homes for basically what will be palliative care at that sort of stage but and we'll be there to provide that quality of life and that excellent care all the way through the whole processes. So I think that's going to be the way it goes, I think the higher care um, and specific accommodation such as dementia um, and more and more people staying at home. In 2007 the Auxiliary celebrated 50 years of service and much of what we still see today is through the hard work of the many loyal and dedicated volunteers of the Auxiliary. Following 13 years of service, CEO Dennis Byron retired in August 2009. However, his love for the aged care industry and Anglican care in particular meant he didn't stay away for very long. Dennis returned to oversee property developments and still today remains heavily involved in this area. In 2010, the brand new Scenic Lodge facility at Merriweather was opened by the then Governor General, the Honourable Quentin Bryce. Anglican Care has become widely recognised as a leader in best practice and a provider of innovative, award-winning lifestyle and wellbeing programs. Over the years, the organisation and our staff have been recipients of prestigious awards, both locally and nationally. These awards include the ACS State Awards for Excellence in the Media, TAFE New South Wales Trainee of the Year, High Commendation in the Positive Living in Aged Care Awards, Better Practice Awards for Cameos for Empathy and Dementia Care and the Take 5 Calendar and the Memory Magic Program. Hunter Age Care Achievement Awards Trainee of the Year, to mention just some of the acknowledgements. The Anglican Diocese, through its provision of pastoral and spiritual care, delivery of chaplaincy services and links to the parishes, has been integral in the fabric of Anglican care, from where it began 60 years ago to the best practice organisation it is today. Well, Anglican Care as a vision started in local churches and saw a particular need to address the concerns of elders. And that relationship has continued over the years. As Anglican Care has grown, so have the parish's interests in those communities. And many of the people that live in the residences of Anglican Care are from churches. Many are not. But that doesn't matter. It's the, the deep connection that churches want to support people in the latter years of their life and to offer friendship, offer companionship, take an interest in what's happening in them. It's critical for the long-term future of Anglican Care and for the church that we're in this together. They're not by themselves and we're not by ourselves. We're in deep connection with an important segment of our community. The Dean of the Cathedral at the time, Dean Hardy, and some of the Cathedral parishioners uh, started out with the idea, acquired the land at Borigal, which really would have been the backwaters in those days, uh, 60 years ago, um, and put uh, eight little units there and a, and a matron, uh, Leela McIntosh, and uh, uh, that sort of ethos has continued actually where um, uh, the diocese has been um, involved. Uh, every bishop has been very caring and supportive, uh, a lot of parishes, a lot of parishioners uh, give of their time, and uh, I think it's, again it's, it's a wonderful mission outreach of, of the diocese, I do believe that. Anglican Care acknowledges the vital roles of past and present bishops, chaplains and parishes, and we look forward to the continued involvement of the diocese in the future of the organisation. As a testimony to its commitment to providing excellence in care and enhanced lifestyles, Anglican Care has been blessed to see many residents achieve some amazing age milestones, particularly the gorgeous Alice Barry, who spent many years at Greenmount Gardens and passed in 2011 at 106 years young. In 2012, Colin Osborne joined Anglican Care as CEO, bringing with him extensive experience in the health sector, a strong business ethic and a desire to assist the organisation to continue its delivery of excellence in aged care services. Anglican Care has got a great reputation in Newcastle and the Hunter. 
Um, it's an organisation of substance and, and reputation. And when the opportunity came to take on this role, I jumped at it. Under his tenure, Anglican Care has seen extensive growth in the organisation's care portfolio. I think that the organisation really needed to move away from that typical not-for-profit culture, um, you know, and I think we've been able to achieve that. You know, the organisation now understands that financial sustainability in the long term is the cornerstone against you, which you lay all of your strategic objectives. And uh, you know, we've developed a fairly significant and ambitious strategic plan and a range of initiatives specifically to pursue those objectives. And there's been a fair degree of commitment and diligence in you know, doing the things that are necessary to, to achieve our strategic goals. I think our, our, just our commercial result is far better than it has previously been. And of course, in any organisation, money is the lifeblood of uh, being able to you know, pursue the things that you want to achieve. So uh, being able to get a better result from our operations has meant we've been able to plough a lot more money back into our capital works program, which in turn is going to be necessary for us to be able to meet the ongoing and, and increasing demand for aged care services. Colin was recently recognised for his dedication to Anglican Care and the aged care industry, being named by a National Industry Awards Program as most outstanding CEO in the care sector. My role as Chief Executive Officer is to make sure that the organisation's wellbeing is protected and promoted. But the services that we provide, on the other hand, are incredibly important to maintaining the wellbeing and the lifestyle of people. And at, at the heart of what we do, is looking after people and trying to enhance their lives. We welcome Taree-based facilities, Storm Retirement Village and Bishop Tyrrell Place into the Anglican Care family in 2013, thereby expanding our services into the Manning region. In 2014, the aged care industry commenced a period of reform and recognising the growth of the aged population and a growing need for palliative care, the role of nurse practitioner, palliative and dementia care was introduced. In 2015, Anglican Care was announced as the successful proponent to provide aged care services in Gloucester, and also saw the successful transfer of services from Lake Mac Care Services into the fold, signalling further expansion of the organisation and its ability to provide care and support to seniors. Warnervale Gardens celebrated its 10th anniversary and design work commenced for the next stage of Northwood Retirement Living at Tanambit. And in a timely precursor to celebrating its 60th anniversary, redevelopment of CA Brown at Booragal also commenced. Also in 2015, Anglican Care residents went to the Olympics, that is the Senior Olympics. Anglican Care is governed by a volunteer board of directors. The role of the board is to provide governance and strategic direction to assist senior management and staff to ensure high quality care and service delivery. The current chair, Mr John Kilpatrick AM, will this year celebrate 45 years as a member of the board and the past 35 years of those as the chairman. I've enjoyed every minute of it. We've seen uh, uh, England Care grow from, uh, there was only one village at Borigal when I started. Uh, we've now got 12 from uh, Otari in the north to Warnervale on the central coast. Um, we've got 880 people in care, so in that's in high care. Uh, and low care and uh, plus some um, independent living and community people as well. You spend your life with people, good people, um, you feed off them, they feed off you and, and I've enjoyed the company of people I've been in, anything I've done and, and uh, there's some lovely caring people involved in Anglican care and I've enjoyed being with them over the years. In honour of his dedication to the organisation, Anglican Care's new aged care home in Toronto, due to open in June 2016, will be named Kilpatrick Court. We pay tribute to all board members, both past and present, and appreciate their dedication in assisting Anglican Care to reach its full potential. We've been really lucky actually, we've had some very talented people, some very caring people. I think it's pretty important, with great experience and knowledge and, and uh, uh, because the board really strategically plans where you're going and whatever you've got uh, challenges and uh, changing programs all the time, you've got to have people that are competent to uh, meet those challenges and then have the courage to have a go. Technology has played a significant role in the history of Anglican Care. 
From the introduction of the first film projector in 1968, the installation of the first public telephone in 1969, the purchase of television sets in 1976, and the first computer in 1984, we have moved with the technology of the times, and in recent years, the evolution into the digital era. The use of Nintendo Wii game consoles to deliver lifestyle and well-being programs, broadband kiosks and iPads assist our residents and clients to stay in touch with family through email and Skype. And the recent introduction of our telehealth initiatives mean that residents can have appointments with their practitioners without leaving their facility or home. In 2010, 83-year-old CA Brown resident Marion Britt was affectionately dubbed Techno Nana when using her own iPad. She set up her Facebook page to keep in touch with her interstate grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Marion was well ahead of Anglican Care on this front, whose official Facebook page was launched much later, and Harry Bennett became a graduate at 100 years of age, receiving his diploma in the Tech Savvy Seniors Program. Anglican Care has a history of having selfless and dedicated people as part of the organisation, both staff and volunteers. One of our longest serving people, Anne Wright, put down her scissors and comb in 2012, after spending 41 years as the contracted hairdresser at Borigal. Karen Williams dedicated 32 years of her life to the health and well-being of the residents and clients in a number of roles, including a stint as Acting Deputy Director of Nursing at CA Brown and as a coordinator in community care. There are a number of long-term staff who remain part of the Anglican Care family today, and we sincerely thank these dedicated individuals for their ongoing loyalty and their continuity of care to our residents and their families. I think that's probably our number one strength, our staff. We've got some wonderful caring people in every village. You know, you, you can have all the, the best programs and buildings and so on, but really you are very dependent on your staff. Uh, it was a lovely caring staff that get very close to a lot of our residents and community people. They become a bit like part of the family and, uh, uh, and I think that shows through. So much has changed at Anglican Care since it first began in 1956. We can't begin to compile the full 60 years of history and change into one DVD, but we do hope that the snapshot presented here has given you an insight into our history and maybe even invoked some personal and fond memories. But as the saying goes, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Those things that will never change, that will always remain constant in Anglican care, are the dedication of our staff and volunteers and the quality of care, service and lifestyles that we provide to the community. Well, celebrating 60 years uh, is no easy matter because there are many people on that journey. When you look back at 60 years, the decisions, the deep sacrifices of people that made it happen, the people who made the decisions, who built those buildings, we celebrate their work, their endeavour, their imagination. And we're celebrating today also the staff down through 60 years, the, the many staff that have been consistently caring for people. We want to celebrate their service and we want to celebrate the residents themselves, that they've found a home beyond their home and they have a place in our life. So we, we have, a, I think, a, a holistic response in the celebration and we want to celebrate with the wider community. I think it's a nice milestone. Uh, there's a lot of things uh, have probably started and finished before this and, uh, and I can see it's growing from strength to strength. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, plans at the moment and uh, there's always going to be a need. We're all getting older. Um, I'd like to see it continue for a few more years for my sake. Um, it, uh, it's, it's, it's something special and I really enjoy it. 60 years for any organisation is a pretty significant milestone. Um, and I think, you know, it's important that we do at times, particularly at these milestones, just take a, a moment to reflect and think and, and, you know, be thankful for what it is that we've been able to achieve. Um, often, you know, organisations don't ce celebrate their successes and their milestones, but uh, we think at Anglican Care it's okay to have a bit of fun and uh, we're looking forward to a party. <laughs>